it properly, properly scared me. <laughs> okay, so here's the current situation. It's about half past 11 on a Thursday night. I have an engine to change at work tomorrow, but it's clear and new. It. The main telescope rig is in the garden, it's doing its thing, capturing hydrogen alpha on the Lion Nebula. But since it's so wonderfully crystal clear, I decided to walk through the village to the big dark field with a head torch, camera, tripod. Nightscape practice, so you're tagging along with me. Let's get to the field. It's a bit chilly out actually. I've got maybe five layers on, a couple of shirts, a couple of trousers, some boots on. <laughs> I would think of probably walking up a mountain or something. Oh, here's the field. So here's the nice lovely field. I can see Orion up there. You can just make out the main stars. <sighs> Maybe I can brighten that in post, but it is absolutely gorgeous here. That is um, the community center. Maybe I can use that as a foreground. Some houses over there. So I'm probably gonna go over to the corner here and then set up. I don't think I need to go too far in. Just far enough. And uh, Ryan is right above those street lights, annoyingly enough, typically. Man, it is so beautifully clear out here at the minute. Just, just wonderful. Apparently, according to the forecast, this clear sky only will last until about midnight, so oh, I was sitting there trying to edit a book. And I was like, nah, I gotta go. I gotta try and get this a go. So. I mean, I'm not the fittest in the world, but because I rushed out of the house, that's kind of why it sounds like I'm breathing a bit heavy. But I'm not that unfit. <laughs> I think. Right. This should do. Here's my little bag of tricks. What we got in here? It's got the ATD, 50mm, Sigma 17 to 50, and a remote shutter. Let's try the ATD with the kit lens on. Okay, so. Right, I think I'm pointing at Orion. This it's obviously out of focus. Oh, there we go. Sorry, the camera's so noisy. So let's try 800. I am untracked. That's one of the things. This is completely untracked. So we're going to do some live view focusing. Punch in on, I think that's Beetlejuice. Yeah, that's Beetlejuice. So turn. The live view screen is absolutely noisy as heck. Okay. Let's take a 10 second shot. Oh yeah. Not too bad, is it? <laughs> focus is all right. The focus is good. There is some chromatic aberration. It's really hard to see on this video here. There we go. So that should be fixed by stopping the exposure down a bit. But to compensate for that, I'm gonna up the ISO. 
Much better. Still a smidge of chromatic aberration and a bit of blurring as well. Ideally this is where the um, remote shutter would come in handy. So here's something pretty amusing. I've been trying to take one of those like selfie nightscape images where you put yourself into it and I was using my head torch to illuminate the ground. And then after the shot I turned around and saw that <laughs> because of my head torch on the camera, it properly, properly scared me. <laughs> I thought someone had appeared and was just standing there. <sighs> that properly made me jump. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is I put it there <sighs> so this is what I'm currently working with uh, let's have a look info so I used the head torch to illuminate the foreground obviously that's me I'm not even going to try to get myself into focus 10 seconds f5.6 ISO 1600 I have to step it down or to protect the corners of the stars or else you get coma especially with cheap lenses like this kit lens but yeah I'm actually quite pleased with how that one came out what I might try to do now is carry on taking some unguided untracked shots of the sky and then use something like sequator to try and stack them into a usable image and then see if I can do some foreground and background blur, 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 blending so according to the rule of 500 I should be able to get maybe 15 16 seconds so let's try this. So I'm using a remote shutter. Okay, so that looks okay. Let's punch in. And we can see that they are quite egg shaped. Lock it down to 10 seconds. Again, remote shutter. So 10 seconds should be well within the MPF and 500 rules. And let's have a look. Yeah, once again, ever so slightly oblong. So this looks like it's going to be a eight second exposure. These things are great as a rough guide, but they are just a rough guide. Nothing beats just zooming in and checking your pixels and your images on the back of your camera. So, yeah. I've always wanted to try this night to get photography with the camera tripod and all things like that. Uh, but I'm not expecting a good photo because like, it's a cheap lens, it's not got much aperture, there's short exposures, it's not tracked, this and the other. I mean, I know there's the old adage of bad, bad workmen playing their tools, and I'm pretty sure you can get a fantastic photo. Uh, I'm just, this is my first time doing this kind of thing, so we'll see how it turns out. If there's even a photo at the end of it. Right, I'm gonna start packing up, I think, and then we'll see what result I've got at the end of this. I mean this is a pretty rough video, I've filmed on my phone and stuff, but let's see what happens, yeah? Thanks very much for tagging along for whatever car crash of video this is going to be. <laughs> but yeah, hope you enjoy the photo at the end. I mean I'm going to share it anyway. We're all here to learn, aren't we? Alright everyone, thanks very much for watching. It's clear skies, keep looking up. Keep them cameras clicking and I hope you enjoy the end photo. My arm is going so dead. Oh.